Do what you've been coached to do, what you know how to do, and play with incredible effort every snap. Sure, sure. Hey, and for you seniors, make it one you'll never forget. Let's go. Everybody got right, it. Right, let's, right, let's get out there. Let's go. 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 Let
it's a different deal right here. And so just, just, it's okay. We haven't had that called maybe one other time this year total. So it just was one of those deals where it was different in the ball game. And I think, uh, I thought overall, uh, offensively, we were cleaner than we've been. Um, we did have the turnover, but great tackle by that kid. Lincoln had it high and tight and ball came out. And then the other penalty was a hold, which was questionable with Jaden Sheckle. I thought Jaden was in fine shape there, um, but it did take up, uh, I think they took at least two touchdowns off the board. Um, early in the game. So again, it, it was, and really when you get to that, the biggest thing is, you know, penalties went on both sides. It wasn't that. Well, it, was, yeah. it was a momentum, just the, you know, just the first half took forever and it just kills momentum. And then you have the heat timeouts and it's 70 degrees, you know, and that that's a state rule. That's, I mean, and I know, understand completely why they do it, but it just breaks the momentum in the game. So you had so many stoppages in play, it was hard to get in rhythm. We almost had to do a go, go find me for your uh, super fan. <laughs> I got a text, uh -huh. like you're going to have to bail me out. Uh -huh. <laughs> I said, okay, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Jenny Tankersley. I'm Dwight Tankersley. And I'm Rajane Hampton, and we're your agency on Maine. Local realtors here to serve you. One of our team members will be more than happy to find you that perfect home. Go Tigers! Come see us at Eddie Pruitt Ford. We're a proud supporter of Hartzell Athletics. All right, I'm back with Coach Brian Moore. Coach, Let's talk about the offense. You averaged 7.5 yards a carry. Um, that's the largest we've had, largest average, largest yeah. rushing total we had. Uh, why did that happen? Uh, I thought we were better. Um, again, they ca they came up and tackled us and did some things to, uh, you know, in years past, we'd have run for, you know, 50-yard gains and, you know, put the second group in earlier. But, you know, they made us earn some things. And uh, but, but we're getting better up front. You know, we're continuing to mix and match. Nolan Carroll got his first start at tackle. Um, and so we slid Elliott Halls inside to play guard, and he runs good, so that helped us a little bit with getting on the perimeter. And um, But we've got to clean some things up, not just in there, but also perimeter blocking. We were not great out there, not as good as we need to be. I know Coach Perrin is addressing that. Uh, we did in championship plays, what we talk about on Sundays in front of the team is, you know, man, we got to block out there and, and sustain blocks because those are those big runs, you know, when a safety's not able to fall in or a corner, um, you know, Ryan Lincoln go score on those. So. Uh, we still got some things to clean up, but it was better. Um, every week we're, we're getting a little bit better now. Obviously, well, I know we'll talk about this in a minute, but our challenge will be real this Friday. So that'll be very different than what we've seen. So, uh, But, again, we're taking steps. Um, we're, we're sort of knocking that inexperience off as we go. Um, you know, now guys have played in four ball games, um, but the, the, we have not had the same rotation in a single ball game up front so far. So that's another deal. You know, you talk about chemistry and continuity up there. It's been tough for us, man, because – you know, and I know it's frustrating. It's frustrating for the coaches and it's frustrating for the kids. But when you get one hurt, you know, you're mixing and matching and kind of who are we? And when you have four new starters, you're still trying to figure those guys out. Luckily, again, we've played a month of football now and um, we should be settling in a little bit better. thought we were going to have a buzz there. Oh. Close. <laughs> All right. Well, we have to cut that out. All right. Uh, three quarterbacks. Yep. So action. How much does that help you guys? I think it's great. I mean, I'd like Carter to have been able to play more. He was one of the ones that's sort of a victim of the eight-minute half or eight-minute quarters uh, running clock. You know, Carter um, is very capable at quarterback, and um, he's a he's a great kid and tough and a competitor. And, you know, last year he was the ninth-grade quarterback that went undefeated, and, um, I mean, they hadn't lost a game. You know, those guys, that group. And so, um, you know, he's very capable, understands our offense and how to, how to run the whole thing. He spent – sort of earning his time, I guess, down there on scout team. And, you know, that's that's a tough year. Tenth grade sometimes can be like that. And But he's doing a great job, you know, sort of behind the scenes. You know, nobody talks about that guy. He's down there getting Coach Newton's group better, you know, and uh, and learning along the way, the speed of the game and watching those starting DBs and stuff. You know, I think it helps him in the long run. But, you know, Noah Lee got, uh, I think, three or five times, completed three or four of them out of those and um, took some tags. You know, even late in the game, we kind of left the tag zone. To be able to throw some of the out routes and the and the bubble screens and stuff. Trammell got a couple there late. Trammell got a speed sweep, which was good. And then Noah really runs it well. I think 
you know, uh, we've got to incorporate him more into our rushing attack. I think he's very capable. I mean, he caught a touchdown, you know, so he's kind of doing it a lot of different ways. But as far as zone read stuff and even design quarterback runs, Noah can really help us. And, and then I thought Landon late in the game settled in. It was his best completion percentage. Um, he was really efficient. His quarterback rating continues to go up. I think he's 80 or 90 now. He's getting or closer to 100. But anyway, he's growing right there. Where after the Austin game with the two interceptions, it was really low. And so we've seen him each week take care of the ball and get better and better. So I'm pleased with those guys. That's what you want to do. Yep. Um, first offensive player of the week. Lincoln yeah. Right. Yeah. Finally got him. Yeah. Fourth week. Yeah. Uh, what can you tell about his performance? I mean, he's kind of done a little bit of everything. Yeah. He was the captain this week. Really proud of Link. You know, as far as his consistency and, um, you know, there's been some bumps in the road with Lincoln, and that's not a secret. I mean, he, and he's mine. I mean, uh, you know, I spent a lot of time with the running backs with Coach Orr, and you know, tr they meet in my office, and so we spend a ton of time together. And um, he's just growing up, man. And that, you know, more importantly than any of the football stuff, he's growing as a person. You know, and that. That, to me, is, is why we're here. You know, that's the impact we want to have, and um, we're seeing him be really consistent. And, you know, for us to be a captain first, like, you've got to be perfect all week. Like, you can't, you can't miss a rep. You can't be late to anything. You've got to be right. And, um, and he was last week. And then for him to go and perform after that, you know, he had a, a series. I think it was about the fourth series of the game. Offensive right had scored the third series of the game. And then Coach Orr left him in for, like, 11 straight plays. I think, like, nine of them were carries of his. So, like, all his rushing yards came on that one drive. We don't normally do that. Right. You know, we rotate backs quite a bit. But we wanted to push him a little bit, especially after the fumble. You know, we right. wanted to push him and strain him. And he was fine. Bounced right back. Um, had two 19-yard runs in a row. Like, had some explosives in there. Um, he's a really good back. And, a matter of fact, his yards per carrier are higher than Rise right now. Right. He's an incredible athlete. He's a very good athlete. Um, I mean, he's chiseled. You, I mean, Lincoln is shredded guy. You know, he's a really good athlete. Obviously, great wrestler. Um, his balance is great because of that. You know, all the stuff that they do. It's funny. Uh, so, my son is now wrestling. And so, like, they do the forward rolls and all this kind of stuff. So, like, now I see Lincoln do that in a game. So, like, he gets hit. Instead of taking all the impact, he'll just, he'll just roll like a wrestler. Right. You know, and it sort of keeps him healthy, you know, which is funny to see that. And, and I didn't understand what he was doing until I, you know, saw the other side of that. And I think that helps him, again, with balance and being able right. to stay on his feet and play with, you know, low to the ground. And, uh, you know, he could put his hand down and keep running. So, just, again, as a football player, Lincoln's always been good. But as a human being, like, he's made such strides. He's a good person. It's just consistency at times. And now being consistent, it's great to see the most rewarding things a coach is once they do that stuff and then it pays off and they start playing well and, like, good things start happening to them. You go, like, dude, this is why. You know, this is that light switch for you. And just really proud of Lincoln. Okay. We'll be right back. You're watching the Coach Brian Moore Show. All right, we're back with our Player of the Week, Lincoln Bryant, Eddie Pruitt Ford Player of the Week. And Lincoln's a senior running back. Lincoln, um, first thing, what was your favorite moment so far this season? Uh, definitely me throwing the ball to Noah for a touchdown against Coleman. All right, tell us what, what you did in that play, because not everybody can remember. Uh, I went in motion, and Landon threw me the ball, and then I threw it. So the double pass. Yeah, the double pass. That's awesome. And – if you could play any other position, I usually ask that question. But then I found out you played QB coming up. So if you could play quarterback, would you do? What what else would you rather play? Rather um, running back. I'd probably rather play receiver. Really? Okay. We well, may I see you never know this week. Um, what part of your game do you want to improve on the most? Well, uh, just doing what I'm coached and hanging on to the ball better because I fumbled this past week. Hey, he did say you were carrying the ball correctly, that it was just kind of a free. Yeah, it was. I didn't see the dude. Okay. Um, all right, and this question, I love this one. Who on the team has the best drip? And this, we had to clarify this last week. It's not necessarily you can do in-game drip or out-of-game drip, but you got to tell us which one it is. Uh, Probably Peyton's still in-game. All right, what about out-of-game? 
Probably Peyton still. Okay. Hey, vote for you, Peyton. He hadn't had a, he hadn't had a vote yet. Um, and then your favorite part of practice? Definitely competing for third downs uh, for dessert on Thursdays, team meal. That's what everybody said. So the dessert's got to be good. Oh, they are. I'm going to have to score and invite to team meal. Mm-hmm. All right. Thanks so much for taking your time to come down here. We'll be right back. You're watching the Coach Brian Moore Show. This is Shane Odom with Marmack Commercial Real Estate. We approach real estate with our three I approach, integrity, intelligence, and innovation. To be your full service real estate company that can handle all your real estate needs from commercial, such as warehouse, retail, apartments, to land, farms, residential developments, along with houses such as investment homes or your dream home. Marmack Commercial Real Estate has over 15 years experience providing award-winning full-service real estate experience. One team, endless possibilities. Marmack Commercial Real Estate. All right, we're back with Coach Burt Newton. Coach Newton's our defensive coordinator and uh, assistant head coach. And Coach, um, you record your first safety. Let's just start there. We'll start with something positive. Hadn't had a safety. Uh, what happened to give you that opportunity? Well, that was a you know the big play was set up by kickoff for special teams. Like their kickoff cover, kick it deep, and then the guy went backwards. And and there's a great shot on our uh, uh, our drone shot the, the, of there's like nine guys like just swarming this guy, and uh, we we get him on about the one. And uh, the next play we call our six man pressure and um, slanting inside and Porter hit it in the mouth and well, so maybe Jamo Jamison hit it too. So it's like a double safety deal, and so it was good. It was good. That's awesome. Um, 31 players, I had to look at my question, 31 players recorded a defensive statistic of some type. What does that say about the depth of your defensive players? I, just, I You know, we talked about it even starting with the first week at Austin. Like, our depth's going to be one of our, our things we, we're going to be good at. And uh, just the coaches trusting those kids and having the rotation to get them in and, and making sure that we're getting equal reps and guys that need more get more and, you know, less get less. And, and it, it, it breeds a competition, too, at practice of – if I do better, I'm going to get more reps. And so that's been really, really good this year. All right. And then um, I want to talk about this moment that I saw in the fourth quarter. So as soon as I saw it, I was like, I'm going to ask Coach Newton about that. Your reserves. Uh, Columbia gets first and goal. Yep. And they kept him out of the end zone when they it did. really did. And, and there were some young bucks like uh, Parker Worley was in there and got a stop on a first down. Blaine Johnson had a big one. Um, it's always exciting when those young guys start doing that. And it, it was the uh, – it shows the growth, you know, against Jackson Owen, we put some young guys in there, and we gave up a score late. And um, anyway, I was I was very proud of him. Yes. Um, and then I want to let's turn to guys in city because okay. I've got lots of questions about them. Um, Me too. <laughs> <laughs> what are the statistics? I got to read this because it's a long question. Um, it's the big flex, right? Yes. And you define that as plays of fifteen yards or more. Now I, I, I did got a little, bunch of them. Yeah, I did a little research, and that's pretty much how they score. Yep. So, um, how are you scheming up, or what strategies are you using that you can tell us okay. to try to stop that? All right, so, you know, they're averaging 44 points a game. I think they're number three they offense in the state or something like that. Um, by the way, you're, you've been, you've been giving this four games of death thing. I looked it up. <laughs> they're, they're all are averaging 40 points or more a game. <laughs> so, and uh, the Gaston City, going back to them, they're very talented. Um, they got receivers and, and running backs, and the quarterback can go. Um, and just being right, and, uh, you know, I think you know controlling we control in the box and making everything go east and west and then you know coach Cole the first thing on his he does a powerpoint every week um, that the kids get to see on Sunday excuse me Monday morning and it's really really good about but it's it's don't let nothing behind you make them earn it and if we do that we're going to be fine uh, I think um, but they are very very talented it's going to be a big challenge but I'm looking forward to it I think I think it's going to make us better no matter what and um, you know it's it's you know it's, I think it's going to be a good it's good good night if we can. Stay focused and handle homecoming and all that kind of stuff. Okay, and this is a mental health kind of question. My my last follow up is if we are victim to that big play, what do you do? How do you keep them in the game and and teach them to recover, refocus, and regroup? Yep. Because that guy, I guarantee, you this game's going to move fast, and you know that. I, I think it's next play. Uh, you know, it, it, correct what we can correct technique wise, um, and and know that they that. You know that we have faith in them, and if not, they wouldn't be in there, and and they'll come back, and we'll be fine. Okay, all right, thanks, Coach. We'll be right back. You're watching the Coach Brian Moore Show. Thanks. Pet Funeral Home is owned and operated by folks who live in the same communities they serve. Our employees are the heart of our business. The funeral home proudly employs over 30 local individuals. 
Currently, the funeral home is managed by Jeff Halbrooks, who has held that position for over 20 years. Our goal is simple and has remained the same now since 1929. Peck Funeral Home strives to provide genuine service from the heart. All right, we're back with Coach Brian Moore. Coach, let's look ahead next Friday. Uh, last year, we were road warriors. Yeah. You know, we had four games in a row on the road. And, you know, what is better? We got them at home this year, four games in a row. Tough opponents. Yeah. Was it better when we were us against the world? Or do we have an advantage here because we're at home and we feel comfortable? I think I think it worked great. Like, and And it did go into the planning and the scheduling. You know, last year was an old team. You know that I felt like I could handle it, and and it, and it and some things had to work out too. Like the opponent has to agree. Like you know you can't just get to pick wherever you want. If you want to be home or away that year, it has to all work out in regards to their schedule and all that that goes into it. But I thought our team last year could handle that. Now I didn't know if we could go on the road four in a row and win them all last year. Absolutely. You know to go to Gas and Oxford, Muscle Shoals, and then to Athens, I think was a, was a challenge for for would be for any team. But I knew that this team would be younger, and so to be able to have these four games in JPK Stadium was huge. In right. front of our crowd now, we have to do the homecoming thing this week, you know, which is, um, right. which, you know, I told them Sunday, I said, look, you know, this is not a homecoming opponent. Like, it was the only option, you know. <laughs> like, I want you to understand that, that I didn't want to play them. They're too good for that. And with all that goes in it, I said, so, like, you're going to have to sort of treat your homecoming a little bit different than you're used to. You know, um, we're at a place that homecoming matters. And, like, it's such a cool school thing for us to do all that we do. But it can be exhausting, you know, for kids to stay up and make floats and just all that goes along with it. And, and the, the, the other thing, the kickoff stuff tonight and just everything that goes on. Um, but we've got to focus on playing football. And because, again, this is not somebody I would want there. Uh, again, it's just the only option that we had. So, But uh, I am glad to play the, this four-game stretch at home. Uh, Gaston's really good, um, probably a little better than they were last year. Um, and so we'll have to, especially offensively, they, they're pretty dynamic and, uh, so we, we got our work cut out for us. We'll have to have a great week. Well, we were kind of flat last year yeah. there at Gaston, but rebounded for Oxford. Um, if there's been a single thing that we can't seem to get over, you you spoke about it at the beginning. Somehow we're going to got that clear buoyant thing going on, but it's the slow start. Yeah, um, we can't seem to start a game quick. Yeah, we got to do that against Gaston. So <laughs> what are what are we doing? Well, I think you got to alter practice. I mean, obviously you got to bring awareness to the problem because right. kids may not see that. You know, I don't know if at 17 if I remembered how many opening drives we scored on versus, uh, you know, you just don't, you're just out there playing and whatever. But as coaches, we look and we say, all right, we got 11 possessions in the game. The first four were terrible. We can't keep doing this, you know, and it's been every week. And so, you know, defensively, we started really fast. And, um, you know, except for the Austin game. Other than that, we've been really sharp early in games. Um, and like in Jackson Olin, we were great in the first half and not quite as good in the second half. So we've started pretty fast. Offensively, I think we've got to alter practice. Um, we got to get a little bit more competitive at the beginning. So right when we flex, like today, we're going right into a competition period. So I think maybe it's just, you know, starting our engine a little bit, you know. And get, But golly, as far as like pregame stuff, we do more than anywhere. I mean, we band stretch and partner stretch and go out on the field at 520 and like uh, to a point where it's a joke how early we are out on the football field, you know, with the coaches and me and whatever. But, you know, I, I don't know. I think I think we've got to continue to figure out what the right ingredient is with this group. Um, you know, part of that's Landon. I put that on him a little bit. The Q's got to get us started, not just from his play, but also being vocal, being assertive, you know, going ahead and leading. Like you hear him as the game goes on, he gets more and more vocal. But he needs to start that way. Take control. It's his team, man. Let's go. And, uh, and then as far as Will and, and Matt and everybody, let's put, him, let's put him in positions where, you know, we can get him settled. Let's get him hit early, you know, get a run in there. Let's flip a couple of bubbles out there and complete some passes and get in a little rhythm. So, you know, I think it's a lot of things that go into it. You know, I think we've got to be willing to be a little bit more aggressive early as play callers. You know, that's okay. Again, you know, you, we, you and I have talked about this. How much, how far down that rabbit hole do we want to go? You know, can't we've got to be careful not outdoing ourselves here and, you know, losing our minds as to who we really are. But I think we with this group we're going to need to, and we're going to need to find a spark early in the game. And so we're, we're searching high and low to find that answer. Gosh, I, I know in, in the personalities with coaching staff, you guys are – you're going to be stretching the boundaries a little bit. We're pretty in the bubble, aren't we? We, yes, we yes, kind of, that's the way we are. We're pretty routine. So, yeah, it'll be good. It'll be awesome. Um, who do we need to look for? Just go ahead and start listening. As far as them? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, all right. So, offensively, uh, I like their quarterback. Um, I think he's a senior. Uh, he's a baseball kid. He's had a labrum deal that 
um, he's better. Um, at last year, he was limited throwing the football, but you can tell that he's Gosh, better. He yeah, he can really run and still does. Keeps him on the grass, you know, with issues and uh, I think really does a great job. And then the back five is really dynamic. He's a junior. Um, up until last week, and I didn't chart the Fort Payne game, but he scored eight of their 13 touchdowns leading into last week. Six rushing, two, two catches for touchdowns. Really good. Um, 16 is a kid that played quarterback some last year. Just playing sort of a hybrid body, uh, bigger body. Plays fullback. Can play in the slot. He scored a couple of times. He's their go-to third down. They want to go there um, to him. And uh, I think they're better up front offensively. Multiple linemen. Uh, I like the left tackle, 6'4", 300, good-looking cat. The center can play. Right guard's a good player. So I like them offensively. They're, they're, I think, much improved. I think much improved compared to last year. And then um, defensively for them, it's, it starts with Kirkpatrick, right? I mean, it starts with four. You know, you got an Alabama guy back there at safety um, that returns kicks. And um, you just – I mean, he is so dynamic with the ball. He's like Ryle returns. I mean, it's crazy. If you kick it to him and he has space, he's going to score. And so, you know, obviously we, we've done a tremendous amount of prep. And, you know, how do we answer that without beating ourselves because there's a balancing act there. Uh, six, the other safety is a good player. And they got two of the defensive linemen that I really like, 99 and 98, that are good players. So, you know, again, they're, this is the best def- – I think they're better on defense than Austin. Um, I think that top to bottom, you know, they're really physical, run to the football, a lot of man coverage, uh, come get you, you know. And, uh, but, again, this is what we scheduled this for. We scheduled it right. for when we get to November, you know, we've seen this. We've seen – SEC guys, we've seen, you know, big 300-pound D linemen. We've seen a back that can go take it, you know, against Hewitt Trussell. I mean, he goes 70 yards against them multiple times. I mean, like, so he's scoring against real people. You know, it's not just scoring against, you know, teams that aren't very good. He's he's playing against other Division One players. So, Over Montgomery. Right, scoring against them from, yeah. from distance. So, again, that's what it was all about. You know, you just hope that, it's like Coach Newton said, one way or another through this four, week, four weeks, however it shakes out, we're going to be better at the back end of it. You know, now you need to win some of these um, right. so that you're not, you know, it's you know, awful at the end. But it is going to make you better. We, we will be challenged and tested just like last year. Okay. And uh, speaking of Kirkpatrick, I, my last question here is he scored, the, I've been told, on punt returns every game. Yeah. So what are we doing? Uh, better not kick it to him. <laughs> uh, we're, we're working on it, man. I mean, there's a lot of different ways. It's. It's not just kicking the ball directionally away from him because he's so talented, he'll go get it, but it's hanging it up there with height. You know, it's hang time, and, uh, you know, we've got great cover guys. You know, Peyton Steele's on there and guys like that that can really run and have done this for multiple years, you know. And so we'll work drills on that. If we do make a mistake and kick it to him, um, then, you know, we've got to – everybody, you know, has got a gang tackle. And last year we kicked it down there to him. He runs around. We missed like five tackles. He's running over people. But we had multiple bodies – getting to the football, and that's the key. One guy's not tackling him in space. Um, we got to leverage the football, understand how to vice it with another guy and uh, fit him right and uh, try to get him on the ground. So, again, we're doing everything we can to keep that from happening. Um, but, yeah, kickoff return, punt return, interception, fumble, scoop score. Like, he's impacting the game. Running back, he's impacting the game quite a bit. A little bit. Okay, we'll be right back. You're watching the Coach Brian Moore Show. Come see us at Eddie Pruitt Ford. We're a proud supporter of Hartzell Athletics. All right, we're back with the Eddie Pruitt Ford Fan Question of the Week, and we know who that is. I'm going to read it. She sent it to me this morning. Guys, the city of Fort Payne had a combined score of 107 points, and that tells me there's no defense either way. Defense is our strong suit. Yep. So how do we prepare this week? Well, I think I think gas is really good defense. So I, I think it was – Fort Payne had some good stuff. Um, you know, watching them on film, they did a good job. Their quarterback's a big-time player. Like, he's, he's he threw some balls in that game that were incredible. And so, they did a good job with that. And, again, Gaston scored in a million different ways, you know. So, that that they impacted the game. I mean, it was like 61 to 40. So, I mean, it was crazy was the score. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I think I think Gaston's really good defensively. Uh, like I said, Fort Payne schematically did some really good things against them. Um, you know, I'm sure Gaston will clean that stuff up, too, you know, just like we would through the week so you can't go back there necessarily and live in that same you know vein that they that they did and 
Uh, but we did take some things and looked at it, and now we had four games to look at. So, um, you know, I like our plan. Um, just got to execute it. You know? They know that you know. <laughs> no doubt. Exactly. No doubt. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Coach. Thank Good you. luck this week. Thank you. We'll be right back. All right. We're back with our final segment here. What's happening in Hartsville High Athletics this week? Again, it's homecoming week, super busy, but does that mean other sports aren't participating? Absolutely not. we got lots of things going on. Wednesday, September 20th, ninth grade volleyball is going to Sparkman. On Thursday, the 21st cross country is going to Coleman. Uh, all volleyball teams are going to play Muscle Shoals and Bob Jones. And HHS volleyball is traveling to HJHS volleyball, excuse me, is traveling to DAR. Friday, that's homecoming where we host Gadsden City at J.P. Kane. Saturday, September 23rd, HJS Volleyball is going to Athens for a tournament, and swimming is going to be at Dublin Park, and that's in Madison. On Monday, September 25th, volleyball travels to Huntsville, JV football travels to Mortimer, Jordan, and ninth grade football hosts Brewer here at J.P. Kane. On Tuesday, September 26th, the junior high volleyball team is going to host Coleman in Athens, and the high school volleyball team is going to travel to Addison. That's this week in Hartsville High Athletics.